get it? Because the X is on fire? Hey, they did something interesting with their logos. Let's send them for that, the fuckers. Are we destined to a fate beyond our control? Or can we evolve? All I know is that Jean Grey is narrating, which means she survives this movie. Spoiler alert, narration. Narr alert? Spoilation? Only CinemaSins could possibly go into an X-Men movie and believe Jean Grey surviving is a spoiler. Become something more. It's not an X-Men movie if we don't open on Ponderous narration about mutation. Like, literally. Yeah, it's called consistency. You know, like how you complain about studio logos and manipulate scenes. But did Logan or Deadpool open up with narration about mutation? Are those not X-Men movies? Okay, how about I make you a promise? When you are old enough to drive, you can listen to whatever music you want. But why would little baby Phoenix believe her mother if she just lied about sharing a radio? Poor Jean is back there imagining a world where she won't pick a single song for eight more years. First of all, it's the radio. You don't pick a song. You change to a station and hope Nickelback isn't playing. Second, Elaine isn't lying. She's teaching her daughter a valuable lesson. You're a little ass kid, shut the hell up and sit back because you don't make the rules. Also, superheroes gotta have dead parents cliche. Pretty sure she's the villain in this movie. So you had a bad day. Jeremy sings in a video cliche. Admittedly, this will make more sense in a later video. Hey, I write sins out of release order. Sue me. So there's a car wreck. She doesn't have a scratch. So someone calls Charles Xavier to handle it? This is the early 70s. He's still a secret operative most of the CIA isn't even aware of, right? Even if he could censor and find her, which he can, why would the hospital staff let him in to interview her? Does Jeremy not realize that this is Charles freaking Xavier? You know, the guy that can literally make people do whatever he wants? So what happens to me now? Well, now Professor X will manipulate your mind to build a conscience for you, since you don't appear to have one. Seriously, her parents are dead, so how is she not sobbing? Because she's a little shit that got mad because her mom wouldn't let her change the station and caused that accident in the first place. She's secretly happy is what I'm saying. Holy shit, I just realized that's the girl that ate Jen Aniston's Cinnabon in the airport and office Christmas party. A movie I have totally not seen 15 times. Hey, this actress was in another movie. That's a sin. Because. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. That you both look amazing for being over 50 and 60 years old? You were both present during the f***ing Cuban Missile Crisis, for Christ's sake. It took you this long to find something actually wrong with this film? And although I agree these characters look far too young and that the X-Men's timeline is way too stupid, it should not take you minutes to find flaws in this garbage. The jet can't get that high. Even with the new booster rockets and all your modifications. <sighs> Give me one mother goddamn bullshit bitch-assing one good bastard reason why the resident smart mutant would already be working on getting the X-Men into space in 1992, as opposed to, I don't know, any other scientific pursuit. But thankfully for this not historically accurate shuttle mishap, dude's been working on getting an X-Jet into space. And by golly, it's gonna f***ing pay off. I do appreciate the tangent you went on while clearly missing that Hank was not developing that technology for space. He explicitly says it can't get that high, which would let a normal person know that he wasn't developing these boosters for space travel. You are not a normal person. Mr. President, are you seeing this on TV? Who the f*** is that in the Oval Office in this movie's 1992? Some kind of Nixonified Clinton? These young version X-Men movies love hopping to important time periods, but then changing the specific details involved. But I can promise you, no one with black hair was president in 1992. That would be the fiction part of science fiction. This fool is really expecting an X-Men movie to be historically accurate when it can't even get its own timeline straight. If anything goes wrong, I'll turn us around in a heartbeat. I know you will. She will not. Spoiler alert! I, I was trying to be Jeremy there, but you see how annoying that is? Like, you're hiding it under a basketball court to keep the satellites from spotting it, but then you lift up and off like this, expelling tons of energy, and what? You think the satellites can't see that? Honestly, the X-Men base location should be about as secret as the location of the G-Spot, which is to say it's obvious for those willing to do the work, but for the lazy it remains unfindable. You just saw Xavier speaking to the President of the United States on a direct line. Why the hell do you think they're trying to hide the Blackbird instead of just storing it in a convenient hangar? Ladies and gentlemen of NASA, this is the voice of Charles Xavier. Could somebody please apprise me of the situation? Classic example of a movie not thinking beyond the scene. Why and how could Charles tap into all of NASA and broadcast a message to everyone who works for NASA, but still not be able to read minds there enough to apprise his own ass of the situation, huh? Because although Xavier could do that, this mission is being done with the express purpose of endearing the United States government, and by extension, the population, to mutants. If he invaded people's minds, that would have a negative effect on the perception of Mutants. Have you not watched a single X-Men movie ever? Storm, steal those cracks! The f we are in space, lady! Storm controls the weather on Earth. Why'd you even bring her ass up to space anyway? But somehow, now she can plug air holes in spacecraft? Storm is not only limited to controlling the weather, she can also manipulate atmospheric pressure and cause ice crystals to form in air, which is what she's doing to the oxygen escaping in this scene. 
Strap in, we're headed home. Funny, my college girlfriend. Oh, strap in. Never mind. Hey guys, Jeremy just admitted to being penetrated by his ex-girlfriend because that's funny and something we all needed to know, am I right? You put those kids in danger. They're not kids anymore, Raven. But you can understand her confusion about anyone's age in this movie, considering both Mystique and Charles have barely aged since 1962. And maybe that should be the central concern of this movie. How is anyone not aging? I'm with you on Professor X, but dude, Mystique is a goddamn shapeshifter. She can literally look any age she wants. I can't actually remember the last time you were the one risking something. Fucking hell, Raven, you don't remember him taking a paralyzing bullet to save the world in first class? You said it yourself. That shit was 30 years ago. Her point is that he isn't the one out there fighting and risking his life, whereas the X-Men are doing all the dirty work. Shapeshifters have no imagination. Clearly the better option is to morph into Luna the dog. You'd have free reign of planet Earth because everyone loves golden retrievers. CinemaSins believes Dabari transforming into dogs is the better move than a random human because everyone loves dogs. Yeah, I don't know how that shit makes any sense either. Wait, so the ex-kids zap off into a forest at night to party and drink and Xavier's just cool with that? And yeah, maybe he wants them to have fun and be teens, but underage drinking? Have you just forgotten your own critique of this movie's age problem? These X-Men are all mid-twenties because if they were teenagers in X-Men Apocalypse, then nine years later, they're clearly not teenagers anymore. Is Storm doing this ice trick for everyone? And at what point does using your powers like this become patronizing? This is just Aurora demonstrating that she can manipulate air and freeze it. The explanation for what she was doing in the space scene that apparently fried your brain. What do you think the X and X-Men stands for? Well, even if it's Xavier, it's probably still only because he started the school and not because he's in love with himself. Just a pet peeve of mine. Professor X's name is Xavier, not Xavier. Get it? X-Gene, Weapon X, X-Men, Xavier. This is comic books, y'all. actually had this argument with someone in my comment section a little while ago. I mean, they say his name aloud in the movies. Sheesh. Come dance with me. The smartest thing he ever did was take a chance with me. Does this count as Jeremy singing? I think this counts as Jeremy singing. Did you hear what the kids are calling? Phoenix. No. Bird that rises from the dead. You'd think this nickname would have started after Jean defeated Apocalypse because her powers manifested in the literal shape of a phoenix. Yep, I agree. It's really f***ing stupid that this movie tries to give her the phoenix force 10 years after she displayed she already had the phoenix force. What in the hell were they thinking? So glad Marvel owns their characters again. Now, to pry Spider-Man and Venom from Sony's cold, dead hands. That whatever happened in space did something to her. Well, duh! Aside from a dozen eyewitnesses, Hank examined Jean minutes after their return from space and was able to tell her powers were off the charts. Tell us something we don't know. For those in the audience that didn't watch Apocalypse or know literally anything about Jean Grey, this is the movie's half-baked attempt at explaining the Phoenix Force. And considering a sizable portion of people don't know shit about comics, including you, they are telling you something you don't know. I mean, when a woman says no and you keep pressing, you probably deserve a bloody nose. Or worse, even. Classic tactic of making everything analogous to rape. You just basically said every time X reads someone's mind, he's raping them. When are you going to graduate to purple and teal hair, I wonder? I need to see, I need to see my father. Your, fa your father's- he's, a, he's alive, I can hear him. Daddy issues. Batman's got daddy issues, Superman's got daddy issues, Daredevil's got daddy issues, Iron Man's got daddy issues, Thor's got daddy issues. My point is that this movie ain't covering any new ground. She believed her father was dead, and now she's realizing that he is alive. How the hell is this considered a daddy issue? And Superman's got daddy issues? Jonathan Kent in the comics was alive and well by the time Superman became Superman, and in the films he was a relatively solid figure in Clark's life. Or are you suggesting that because someone's parents eventually die, then they've got daddy issues? Because I'm pretty sure Batman never really got to know his father, and Matt's father died when he was young as well, but even then they had a great relationship. Iron Man is the only one on this list with legit daddy issues, but it seems you're just saying that because they died, that's a daddy issue. I don't think you actually know what that term means. Okay, I could hurt you again. I'll take that chance. Literally every single one of my college relationships. Your entanglements with your left hand are not sins of movies. I don't have a home. You made sure of that. You also don't have a solid American accent nailed down just yet, but it's okay. You're a great actress. Not everyone can be Christian Bale. You gotta love the critique of Sophie's American accent from the guy whose English accent sounds like Michael Caine if Michael Caine was being played by Kevin Hart on Quaaludes. Who called the fucking cops? I'm gonna tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. This bitch. The f*** was this asshole waiting for? Literally every other ex-person has been doing battle for 15 seconds or so while this guy just hung back like a f***ing selfish jerk.
Jeremy is just making shit up now. Prior to this scene, Jean tried to fly away when Nightcrawler teleported her into the house. This scene is what happened immediately after that. Quicksilver was not just hanging back, and every other X person did not attack before he did. This is a blatant lie. This is why Cinema Sense is satire doesn't work. They're saying objectively incorrect things, and nothing about this sin is comedic or social commentary in any way. Also, why can't she shapeshift around on these wooden things? Why can't the shapeshifting solve the wounds as well as it changes her appearance? She's controlling all the atoms in her body to shapeshift, right? I'm just saying there are a few dozen better ways you could have killed off Mystique, but you buff eat her with wooden stakes. Here's the scene where Jeremy believes Mystique could have just shapeshifted her way out of. Take care of each other. You're my family too. Yes, Jeremy, I'm sure she knew those spikes were behind her, and while they were piercing all of her internal organs, she was thinking, what would cinema sense do? <laughs> I refuse to use an umbrella because my sorrow is so great I deserve to be so- Not only this f***ing laugh, but using that laugh to make fun of Sad Beast. That's worth double, I'm afraid. You know, this is where I first met Raven. In a kitchen? That's so Raven. <laughs> your fault she's dead he's not wrong i don't mean to play the shoulda coulda woulda game here but hank may have been able to stop gene with the stun gun before charles interrupted him jeremy and beast actually thought a stun gun would stop the fucking phoenix this truly is an unfortunate development because it's so much easier to understand your language when you're not screaming <laughs> Jeremy makes a fake-ass laugh reference. Okay, that's all I got. Just trying to mix it up here. He does this laugh a lot in this one. The hell? Does he have metal shoes? He can manipulate metal, and we've seen him fly plenty of times using metal. Here, he's hovering in like grown-up Brightburn, and it's lazy. Line up to the right if you want to say he was harvesting metal elements from the air to blah blah bullsh**. No, it's not bullshit. His name is Magneto. Are you unaware that the Earth is essentially a giant magnet? He not only has the ability to manipulate metal, but also the Earth's magnetosphere, which is where he got his name and is how he's able to fly. What's really going to throw you for a loop is when I tell you that Magneto actually has matter manipulation abilities and could turn you into a zombie using your own blood. Whose blood is that? Magneto asks a very good question, considering she had no blood on her when she flew away from Mystique, and when we see her in the rain, she's got a nasty stain. My guess is she killed my hope for this movie. The blood was actually on her hand, and the scene that you cut out here shows that she touched her blouse, which is why she then tried to remove the stain in the rain. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can lift choppers much better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Jeremy sings in a video cliche. What was it? A pure and unimaginably powerful cosmic force. Oh. Thanks. Here is Jeremy's reaction to getting what he always asks for, an explanation. Oh, thanks. We were there, Gene, following that force. Why? Because it's the spark that gave life to the universe. The all spark Transformers invading my X-Men movies. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliche. It's your destiny, Gene, to become something greater, to evolve into the greatest force in the galaxy. However, there's a decent chance that this incredible power will skip you at the last minute and make Bran Stark the greatest force in the galaxy. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliche. If he'd really been done being Magneto, he wouldn't have put this f***ing helmet in a drawer in his f***ing closet. Are you stupid? This helmet is the only thing protecting him from Charles and Cerebro. God damn, this film is cut up more than Edward Scissorhands' girlfriend on prom night. There were four cuts here. Four. I mean, three. Feel the power inside you. That power is you. I hereby break ground on the brand new Jean Grey school for people who believe everything a perfect stranger says about them as long as it's an empowering compliment. There will only ever be one student, but she will ace the exams. Listen, I know this movie is whack, but dude, at least attempt to understand what's going on here. Charles explicitly stated that the force inside of her is raw emotion in response to desire and passion. This means, of course, this kind of manipulation would work in this instance. Pay attention. Look, I don't want to be an insensitive dick. Wait, okay, maybe I do. But if she has the power to force him to walk up the stairs, even though his legs don't work, does she still have to force him to lurch and limp all the way? Wouldn't it be a better show of her power if he walked up like he'd been walking upstairs the last 10 years of his life? How do you not realize that Charles is resisting here? Like, is that not obvious? I'd give good money if one person in this movie gave me an explanation for how handcuffs and those neck locks keep all these heroes from using their powers, because that shit is glossed the f*** over hard. Good money! It's called continuity, son. The MCU is using the Mutant Inhibitor Collar, a device that was shown in Days of Future Past and Deadpool 2, films you have already sinned at this point. 
This reminds me of one time my dog ate a long piece of fabric, and when it finally made its way through the intestines, it just hung out of her ass like a second. Skip! I don't care how powerful of an alien you are, if you wear high heels in a minefield of bullet casings, you will fall down. Cinemasins, ladies and gentlemen. Even Thanos is jealous of that stylish dusting. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't- Your emotions make you weak. Actually, it's a lack of exercise and terrible diet, but sure, let's blame the emotions too. Dude, why the f*** is this video 20 minutes? No, seriously, what about this joke was so funny that you had to include it in this video? Who laughed? Seriously, point those easily entertained mofos to my channel. I'd easily have more than 120k. I've seen all the X-Men movies multiple times, and I'm goddamn positive that Days of Future Past links the early years films to the present day films. But here we have the early years cast killing off Jean Grey, even though she was literally in the end scene from Days of Future Past, only way older and way more fomka -y. And the movie goes on to say she evolved beyond this world but still exists. But then why is Fomka at the end of Days of Future Past? What gives? What the hell gives? You clearly answered your own question there. Jean is not dead and she still exists. There's still a roughly 30 year gap between this movie and the future from days. The group still has yet to encounter the Wolverine after setting him free in the last movie. Of course, King Mickey is going to scrap all of this bullshit, but that was the original plan. I go easy on you. No, you weren't. <laughs> These movies have always been about this friendship, except for this Dark Phoenix movie, which was about aliens and Jean Grey, but still oddly has the Charles Eric chess game ending. Wait, that's the end of your video? Aren't these videos supposed to end on a punchline? Eh, who am I kidding? This is my reaction to those punchlines anyway. Dab on them! <laughs>